Hello everybody, this is Sneaky the Lost, and today I'm going to come to you with um, something that I was inspired by, by uh, a internet friend of mine, Dave, also known as Kieran Dave, uh, formerly Resident Rise, um, back in the days when I, I was involved with Resident Rise as well. Um, now he's just kind of doing his own things, and he had a thing on all the mods where he had a couple of these spruce trees and was producing uh, something like 400 RF a tick off of it, which was pretty awesome considering it's completely passive. And it kind of inspired me. And here's the results of my inspiration, but we're actually going to improve it further just to see how crazy we can get this. Oh, by the way, Dave, yeah, um, as I had said in your live stream... The other day, uh, redstone orchid, redstone ore, and it produces silly amounts of redstone, even without any kind of fertilizer in there. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. That is a valid source of, of passive redstone generation, once you get a red orchid. So, in brief, to recap... The basic mechanic is I've got these spruce trees, and it is specifically spruce because spruce produces twice as much sap as any other tree available at this time within this. And of course, this is my alpha dev environment for SneakyCraft 1.12.1. Uh, it's also the instance I did my uh, mod spotlight on thermal expansion with. Um, still an alpha dev, I'm still trying to tweak things around before the mod is even ready for a beta or the mod pack anyway, but uh, I digress. So, I've got three of these trees. Um, Dave's had two. I've got three trees here with four arboreal extractors each. That is a total of 12 arboreal extractors feeding a single fractionating still. And this is, as you can see, a resonant fractionating still because the, the uh, machines and thermal expansions will run faster if just by upgrading them. So a, a uh, hardened fractionating still will run faster than a basic fractionating still, etc., etc. Uh, they will consume more RF a tick. A basic fractionating still runs on 20 RF a tick. This one is consuming 60. So it is running three times as fast, uh, consuming three times as much RF, producing three times as much product in this given time frame. And so it is producing two things. It is producing tree oil and it is producing rosin. Rosin is going into this Signalum steam dynamo. And um, one thing I do like about the one probe is that you've got that neat little thing up there, steam dynamo Signalum. There is a graphical difference. If you'll notice, the corners are going to be that Signalum color. But I digress. So here's what's going on. This guy is producing 400 millibuckets of steam per tick because he has a boiler converter and two fuel catalyzers. Fuel catalyzers are important uh, because what they do is they basically let you burn the item longer because normally um, a resonant dynamo would be consuming fuel faster, or a signalum dynamo would be consuming fuel faster than, say, a basic dynamo because it produces more RF per tick. In this case, more steam per tick. The fuel catalyzers basically increase the fuel efficiency and lets it burn longer, meaning effectively more energy is produced by a given fuel because it burns for longer for the same RF per tick production. This is actually a key component in this area here. The other thing is notice 400 millibuckets of steam, but these guys are only consuming 120 millibuckets of steam each, or 240 total for 480 RF per tick. And the reason for that is that this is this has times when it is stuttering, when it is right there. You see that for about a, a fraction of a second, it was not running because it is not exactly keeping up with the demand for the consumables and so basically I'm telling it to produce 400 RF steam per tick with the expectation that it's only going to do so about half as much 
which will produce about as much steam as both of these boilers will need. Uh, the other reason I am doing this, and I actually don't want this to continuously have fuel in it, is because I do not want it to back stuff. Because if it back stuffs, then the fractionating still will back stuff, and the whole thing will shut down. This is not desirable. And so basically, what this is effectively is a trash can that also produces 480 RF per tick. Not too shabby. But it's this other end over here, this other wing, that's the real kicker here. Because they're producing 120 RF a tick each. These are resonant compression dynamos. Um, so quite expensive components here. This is not your entry level tree farm. Your basic one is going to be basic or hardened machines at best. It is not going to be able to produce as much. But he challenged me to see just how much RF per tick I can get just off of these trees. And so I'm utilizing some end game materials to do that. And so these are five compression dynamos at 120 RF a tick each for 600 plus 480 is 1080 RF per tick minus 60 RF per tick as a consumption and then subtract say 20 RF a tick from the stuttering if these guys at some point in time don't produce for a fraction of a second. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and call this an even 1,000 RF per tick. Which isn't bad. But it's completely passive. I never have to touch it from here. But wait, there's more! These are resonant dynamos. They have four augmentation slots I can slap into them. Now, I could just go ahead and slap into them these transmission coils that increase power generation RF per tick, but doing so makes them energy ho the fuel hogs. It says less energy RF is produced by fuels, which is the opposite from what these are. More energy is produced by fuels, and it talks about efficiency. What is happening here is, say, it doubles RF production, but it triples fuel consumption. So at the end of the day, you're getting less RF total out of a given bucket of fuel because while you may be getting twice the RF per tick, you're getting a third as much burn time. Um, so that's how, that's how thermal expansion really balances things. So I could start throwing in these... Uh, transmission coils until I just start seeing a tree oil negative scenario but that's actually not going to be as efficient and is um, putting in some of these efficiency modifiers into here and then getting more dynamos There we go. Now then. And yeah, I think the thing is because I built the pipes out there, the pipes are still trying to fill. But uh, since it was oil positive before, it is going to be ridiculously oil positive right now. So let's see how many of these dynamos I can put on here assuming I've got these catalyzers and I'm gonna kind of do this off camera and I'm gonna come back in a second <coughs> once I've done that to see just how much I can get out of this system so I'll be right back Hello everybody, I'm back, and you want to see what I found? Wow. That is 12 compression dynamos. Now, these are resonant dynamos with four fuel catalyzers each. <clears throat> so that is not a trivial amount of resources. However, 12 compression dynamos at 120 each is 1440 RF a tick plus you know the 480 RF a tick over here 
You're talking about 1,800 RF per tick. You're almost, I almost doubled the production here. And um, I, I've hit, well, it, it's still slowly going up, the, uh, the tree oil. So there is still a slight tree oil surplus. But it is very nearly at an equilibrium point where the rate of consumption is only slightly lower than the rate of production. Now, one other thing that I would like to point out is that all 12 of these arboreal extractors do not quite keep up with the resonating fractionating still. I could probably have a third tree in here and then I would be sap positive. Um, <clears throat> a fourth tree in here, I mean. Because the, the as you can see, there are there are times when this stops. Um, you see right there, it stopped. So these trees do not quite keep up with this fractionating still. But you know what? For our purposes, I mean, it's it's producing about eighteen hundred RF a tick and change. Um, off of purely passive. Uh, just off of these tree saps that are just purely passive. I, I'd say job well done on this. Uh, there are other ways to get that kind of RF power production in a much smaller footprint. But uh, at that point you're going to need to set up a process by which the resources can be harvested. Uh, most likely some kind of a steam boiler tree farm setup. I would need to play around with those numbers, but that has the potential to outproduce this in a smaller footprint. But then you're going to need a tree farm I mean, that's going to chop down the trees, replant the trees. You know, so you're 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 talking about a, a process there that's going to be more significant. Now you do have the sapling infuser, so you could use a phytogenic insulator, and. Um, allows for trees to be grown so you could put in say a, a spruce sapling in there and do that and that'll be your tree farm uh, and then that feeds into say a, a, a furnace of some kind to produce charcoal to run the steam dynamo I don't know how many that would work that might be an interesting next video to set up just as just as a compare and contrast kind of thing we probably have a smaller footprint total than this setup would, but you know what? I'm happy with this. Um, I, I believe this meets Dave's inspiration slash challenge of seeing just how much RF per tick I can get off of SAP. Uh, obviously, this is repeatable. Um, there is a limit that the fractionating still is going to be able to handle without needing a second fractionating still obviously but we have not yet reached that with 12 compression dynamos uh, and to reach that we would actually need a fourth tree which I didn't feel like doing here uh, at that point we may even need a second steam dynamo because at that point this thing might be fuel positive and the rosin might start backing up but I think we've pretty much done it here um, so this is Sneaky the Lost, signing off.